Well, hello there. You're watching Offbeat Business TV or listening to the Offbeat Business Show on the OBBM Network podcast. My name is Susan Hamilton. I'm your host, and I'm here with Jerry Penry today. Jerry, how fabulous to meet you. Thank you for the honor to be here. Jerry is here to tell us more about National Write Your Congressman, and stay tuned. You're going to get real excited about this. You're listening to the Offbeat Business Show, rebuilding American business influence locally, nationally, and abroad, bringing you experienced insight for a strong, influential brand and successful life in business. Here's your host, Susan Hamilton. Jerry, it was really a fascinating conversation I've had with you the last couple of days learning about your organization and with the bent that I have towards supporting local family business here in the United States of America, very patriotic cause, I'm realizing that I didn't know about you. And I don't think enough people know about national rights, your congressman, Jerry. Exactly. That's a tragedy because of uh, they've always been word of mouth by invitation only. And so we're bringing them forward into this this uh, generation of people leveraging technology and understanding how to use it to uh, disrupt the status quo. Uh, disrupt the status quo. It's about doggone time. Absolutely. Because I think uh, several of us now are beginning to understand we're being led by the nose. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a little frustrating and disheartening. You know, I'll just uh, recap. Uh, one of the things that I mention in every single one of our broadcasts, and that is our, our target market. And we know who we're talking to, mm -hmm. that 80 to 85 percent of American micro to small business that tend mm -hmm. to be family owned businesses of nine employees or less. Right. That means they're building their business while they're raising their kids, taking care of their parents. They probably have a veteran active duty, Leo, EMT, nurse mm -hmm. in their family or workspace. Mm -hmm. And chances are they've got an addict in their family or workspace. Possibly. And in our community, it's more than possible. We've got about a 30 to 50 percent chance that that's accurate. That's a, a frustrating uh, time for us. And I, and I, I recognize that we're so busy these mm -hmm. days mm -hmm. that all of those things play a huge role in our life, sure. even in business. And they absolutely impact it. So our, our job here on Offbeat Business TV and on the OBBM network is to make sure we're bringing in information that puts power and influence back in the hands of the people through strong business. So there's really nothing smarter than this brilliant website that you've created and the reputation that you've built for how many years? 60 years. Oh my goodness, 60 years. Yes, yeah, right obvious. here in Richardson, Texas. You know, back to the basic premise of why I do what I do mm -hmm. is simply knowledge is power. We've heard that. Yes. But the application of knowledge is more powerful. But the most powerful is the correct application <laughs> of the correct knowledge. True that. And so, you know, you can choose what you believe. Right. And you can choose whether or not to take action. And so the way things are working dynamically and what people have been conditioned to do is just believe what they've been told without even questioning. And I always tell people that one critical element of success in small business is you have to inspect what you expect to be happening. And then as adults, and specifically as business owners, which drive our economy, we can handle the truth. Yes. And when we're given that truth, when we're empowered with that truth, then we can take action in an appropriate manner. But too many people that don't realize that half the truth is still misinformation. Oh, that is a beautiful statement. And I look forward to that being in a quote that accompanies more promotion of this show. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. that's really what it's about. So a simple three-step process. Have the facts at your fingertips. Yeah. With technology, you can get it downloaded to your cell phone in an email. And so the way we work is we understand, and you understand this as well, that we the people, typically do not hear about decisions in Congress or even the state legislative level until after they've made those decisions. Yes. I say when the tattoo ink is dry. And it's too late to fix it. That's not the way it was originally designed. It was originally designed for us to have a dialogue for those people to represent us. So what National Rights Your Congressman does, first and foremost, is they work proactively in informing and engaging our constituency. And so what happens is when Congress is in session, same way when the state legislature is in session, we simply send a one-page review every Monday of everything they worked on and talked about last week, and then a preview of what they plan on working on this week. So that way, if it's issues that concern you, you can weigh in with your elected representative to tell them your ideas, your thoughts, your beliefs, 
and the action you'd like them to, to take as they're making the sausage, so to speak. You know, it's interesting. I, I think what really stops people from standing up for themselves and from paying attention to what's going on is the idea that it's this great big monster. It's too big. It's the they. That's a big right? lie, though. It's that's the, a big lie that they believe is that it's so big and that it's already a big system. And that's the lie they want you to believe. See, they don't really want informed constituents anymore. What? They want sheeple, right? And, but when you're informed, this is what we've discovered. Business owners, when they have the truth and take action, common sense solutions actually rise to the surface. Is that a fact? That is a fact. I we've had some tremendous fact. successes that you'll never hear about in the media. That's true. Most politicians don't want you to know either. But that's one of the things we engage with our constituency base with, is to show them how the impact of strength in numbers, leveraging it the correct way in an appropriate manner does elicit change. And that's what you want to see happen. Sometimes it's not moving positive legislation forward. Sometimes it's just preventing the negative legislation from happening. And I think that's, in my opinion, more of what I see. Sure. Uh, that, and it's concerning because I, I, when you look at what really matters to our market, our target market, that local mm-hmm. family business, we start realizing that they are probably going to ha- maintain that home office even after they've moved out into a brick and mortar. Right. It's a great tax strategy. Mm-hmm. They feel like it's going to be a, c- a closer connection with the, with their school and their teacher. Yes. And they find out later on that they, they weren't really as involved uh, and they couldn't possibly have been. And meanwhile, all of these things pass right. around us uh, that we don't realize that we can have a bigger hand in. Exactly. We're not showing up. Right. And you don't have to be a political activist to be a responsible American. That's true. You just got to know where to put your time and energy. Most entrepreneurs, most business owners are chasing their American dream. Yes. So they don't have a lot of time That's to be, be engaged. Yes. So our platform was built for those people. It was built for those people that have maybe have five to 10 minutes a week that care enough, that know that it's more than just a privilege and a right, but it's our responsibility to hold our elected officials accountable, but they don't need to know the best way to go about it because they want to make sure if they spend the time and energy that they actually get the results they're looking for. And that's what we do. And we can prove it time and time and time again. So the most powerful thing we do is we don't take a position or show any preferential treatment to any political candidate or party. Beautiful. We have no agenda when it comes to telling people what to think or how to vote. Our entire agenda is to preserve our freedoms and maintain this conduit that allows us to see what's going on and weigh in as it's taking place and then hold them accountable to their actual voting record. When do we, the people, normally hear how they voted or if if we do hear about it, after they've done it, right? Whose responsibility is it to hold them accountable? Right, right. Well, I think for too long, Jerry, that's an interesting point. For too long, we've thought the media holds them accountable. And I think more of us are very convinced that that mm-hmm. ha- is not happening right. and it's not and there's such a bias that it's hard to get the right information right. there seems to be a slant in, in the opinion of the person bringing that information before it ever gets there and I don't care what media you're on right. it across the board it's hard people are having a hard time telling the difference between a truth and an opinion Correct. because of the way the information is exactly. presented. And we just present it black and white as it's written, okay? But sometimes we'll break it down in layman's terms so you don't have to read 750 pages or be an attorney. We just give you in a nutshell really what it says. But because we don't take a position, since we don't show partiality, we actually show you how it's argued for and against. Oh, excellent. That way you can really form a very informed opinion before you weigh in on it. So tell me how that looks, because I took some... some uh, Snapshots? Go, yeah, yeah, going through your going through the site yeah. and kind of checking that out. And when we were talking the other day and you were right. showing me some things... That's the action alert. What happens right. is when it actually finally comes out okay. and it's in writing, and they're actually going to take a vote on it, we give you a heads up. Hey, they're going to take a vote here in the next 48 hours. Okay. So that way, that's when you go and click on Take Action. If you've already logged in one time, you literally hit the take action button on the email. It takes you right to the site. You're able, you're already logged in and you can see it and read it and take action. But what's even better is we provide talking points. So if you're for the piece of legislation as it's written, after uh-huh. you've read the facts, you just click the top talking point. If you're against it, you click the second one. Excellent. Now, if it affects your business, you would click the third one as well and then add a brief comment. Brevity is always best, but if you want to be verbose, be very elaborate. You can let, do it be as lengthy as you care to be. Specifically, if you consider yourself an expert on the topic and feel like it's appropriate to weigh in with some statistics and facts, that's what you would want to do. But the most important 
sentence that you click on in that talking point says, as a constituent of yours, I would like to know your thoughts on this issue. Now, what that does is it kind of paints them into the corner where they have to respond to you. If you don't click on that, they don't have to acknowledge you sent them anything. So once again, you get something in writing, that's something that can be used in a court of law and the court of public opinion. So here's the problem. Most people only worry about what they're saying. No, you want to pay attention to what they're doing. Yes. Just remember 97% of what the, what's enacted that impacts you and I on a legislative and regulatory standpoint, that takes place between the elections. Yes, elections are important. But it's more important that you know what's going on between those elections. Oh, my goodness. There's yes. just so much we need to know. Yeah. And I feel so empowered learning Good. about uh, nationalwriteyourcongressman.com. That's fabulous. As a matter of fact, that's you use the acronym nwyc.com. Right. So we are going to take a break okay. and hear from a few of our sponsors. We're going to be right back. Perfect. And uh, are you enjoying this as much as I am? And we'll be right back. We're talking with Jerry Penry. At Work Suites, get back to work your way. Business addresses, co-working, executive office suites. We really thrive on helping small businesses expand their horizons from simply working out of their home. What's really nice is we're flexible with our terms. We don't require you to sign a lease with us. Go month to month or stay a couple years. You may only need a part-time space. You'll have a full kitchen, cover garage access, this is the ideal way to work through the transition in your business and get you up to speed quickly. Private offices have dedicated Wi-Fi, furniture, 24-7 access. Call 888-445-9675 and check us out at worksuites.com to schedule your tour. You're going to love it here. 888-445-9675. And we're back. You're watching Offbeat Business TV. You're listening to the OBBM Network podcast. My name is Susan Hamilton, and I'm here with Jerry Penry today talking about National Write Your Congressman, yes. NWYC.com. And <laughs> we're going to have all that information accompanying this video and the audio. Jerry, to know that we can hold our elected officials accountable, I, t I tell you, that that just is so empowering to know that for 60 years you've been developing a way to do that that's um, expected and easy for our legislature to interact with. Correct, and our and reputation is impeccable. They actually, uh, Jay Nelson's my state senator. Michael Burgess is my national representative. They both uh, have personally told me how much they appreciate the engagement they get from our constituents. And Jane told me that she personally reads each and every email from our constituents for several reasons. One, she knows they're very well informed. They're not off, out on a tangent and being misinformed. Two, she knows they're very sober-minded and intentional with their correspondence to her. But the most important aspect of it, she says, is it helps her bolster her argument representing the constituents when she goes to Austin. They don't think in Austin like we do up here. Yeah. I've noticed because yeah. I get involved every once in a while right. to watching one of the videos going right. on and, and I feel very disregarded. Correct. So I'm, I'm grateful Correct. to know. So she says she's able to walk in to committee or whatever conversation she's having. And if somebody gets an argument and say, well, you're just saying your constituents think this way or whatever. She says she, it bolsters her argument. Michael Burgess said the very same thing. He said, and I caught his radio interview one day just out of the blue. And he talked about why it's so important for him to hear from his constituents. And the example he gave, he said, was back when they were trying to pass the TARP program. If you don't recall, that was when people would inflate their incomes to get an easy mortgage and now they want bailed out. And he was on that committee as they were crafting the language. And he wasn't sure which way to go with it just because he was getting a lot of pressure from leadership. But what made him very curious and suspicious is prior to going in the committee, he'd get a phone call from ex-Vice President Cheney Struck him a little bit odd. So he took the time to call back down here to Texas, talk to his staff. He wanted to know, are we getting any feedback? He said he was able to go back into committee, and he said it this way. I wish I would have recorded it, but pretty good imitation. He said, I was able to return the phone call and say, I wish I could help you out, cowboy, but for every yes I'm getting on this issue, and my constituents are actually weighing in, I'm getting 7,000 no's. Ouch. I can't help you. Now, how powerful is that? That's lovely. That's lovely because, as I mentioned in the in the first half of this interview, it feels a lot of times that you're going up against Goliath. Correct. This thing is so big, and as you pointed out, 
that's really intentional. If right. it looks too big for us to reach in and, and, and hold them accountable, yeah. Uh, that's in their best interest. It's not in ours. We've that's got correct. to stand up for us. There, there isn't any uh, anything that's going to fall out of the sky. Yeah. America's not going to just return to normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took blood and it took uh, it took so much to, to have this nation. Mm -hmm. If we lose that, that's exactly what it's going to take to get it back. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's time we start paying close attention. And I do believe the local family business is saying, you know what, I smell a rat, even if they don't get it. Right. What I've thought for a long time, Jerry, is it, it, through, especially through this pandemic, uh, and really what people are realizing is there were three different levels of, of attention going on out mm -hmm. there. The one is this group of, of business owners that, that go, wait a minute, that doesn't add up, that doesn't make sense, that's not legal. That, wait a minute, I'm going to flat, I, I don't believe what I'm being told. Right. I don't believe the presentation. And they started going, oh, I don't think so. Then you've got, and, and just being strong and bold and, and saying that. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a middle group that's going, you know what? I smell a rat. It doesn't seem right. But I, it's this risky business and I could be wrong. And so I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to wait. I'm going to sit back and target see. On my back. Right. I want to pin a target on my back. I'm going to wait and see what these guys are doing. And if they go forward and they're fine, hey, that's great. If they if they suffer and fall, hey, I didn't hurt myself. Right. Uh, and, but then you've got this group of businesses that are going out of business. They're believing everything. They're doing the, the things that cause you to lose business. Mm -hmm. And they're and it's sad, isn't it? When you drive through town right. and you see these uh, local mom and pops that are no longer there because they couldn't compete. They couldn't adapt to some right. of these other things right. that, that uh, larger companies And they could. lack direction in what they to like do. Mm -hmm. Well, so depending on where you're at, it looks to me like if you understand that this nation was built on risk takers, mm -hmm. this nation was built on people that, uh, not on fearful, but on the courageous. That's right. And on people willing to work together mm -hmm. To, and to look at evil and say, oh, I don't think so. Yeah. If that's the group, we have a very short period of time to get this middle section here and let them see what it looks like to be successful and engage and bring America back. Right. Because otherwise they're going to drop. Those are our choices. Right. We've got to decide what we believe mm -hmm. and then go, okay, whatever that is. Who's representing me now? Who's representing? Mm -hmm. Because that's, that stands for our family, right? It's not just us. Right. It's my family. It's my kids. It's my school. It's my community. And who cares more about that than the risk takers who've done people. it that's for right. them, right? right. Yeah. Right. So it's easy to fall victim to the allure of despotism. Someone else making all the decisions for you so you don't have to take any risk. What are you going to give up for that? Your freedoms. So if you're willing to take the risk, be bold, be courageous, but deal with the facts, deal with the truth, and then you'll be fine. Have a strategy. Even a flawed strategy is better than no strategy. But because of everything that's taken place since the pandemic hit, we have had over a 500% increase with our constituents weighing into Washington, D.C., so much so that they've become the single largest source of direct constituent Excellent. correspondence into D.C., and we're seeing a large impact there. Now, we feel like we're at a tipping point. We just don't have clouds for our. The question is, how many does it take? Well, it takes enough. That's the right answer. Right. It takes enough. Okay. You said that you've got a way to, to ho Hold know them. whether right. they're voting exactly. in that's a way the, that you approve of. That's the best part. So the day they vote on, a, on an issue in chamber, whether it's the Senate or the House, same way at the state level, we publish how they vote. We send you an email that just says, hey, take a peek at how they just voted. And that way you can compare what they've said publicly or how they've written back to you compared to how they've actually voted. But the best part is you can do a deep dive into it and see the details of who sponsored it, what the bill really said. But the best part is we encourage you to vote along with them for a simple reason. It keeps the tally over time. And you'll know over several months, maybe two years, do I really have the right person representing me? Because you'll know that that percentage is. That's powerful. Yes, it's very powerful because I believe right now we've got very few on either side of the aisle that really stood up for us. And when they realize they're being watched, right. they're like teenagers. They behave just a little bit better. Yeah. But we're actually the only organization like ourselves. We're a watchdog research firm. We're not a lobbying group, first of all. Excellent. We teach you how to lobby on your own behalf. You don't need to belong to a lobbying group when you can do it on your own. Because many lobbying groups are very narrow focused on their agenda. When you're lobbying on your own behalf, it could be a moral issue, it could be a tax issue, it could be a security issue. Anything that concerns you, you have a right to lobby in on, on your own behalf, with your own opinion. Just do it the right way. 
So that's what we teach people is how to have that mechanism at their fingertips. Well, and you have it at your fingertips. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. So you can actually get this information and react to it mm -hmm. in real time right. from your phone. That's right. There's a phone app that's real time almost. And uh, the information, I, you know, we're in the information age. And information has an expiration date. And it's only as valuable as it is accurate, relevant, and timely because things change very rapidly, as yes. you know. And so you want to be informed. But at the end of the day, knowing that you can actually go into that town hall meeting when they come into town and carry your hard copy of what they said, and you might want to disrupt that meeting if it's a big enough issue and say, well, you know what? Before you continue with your speech, one quick question. You said this, but you voted that. How about you explain that one? You think you might get somebody's attention? Mm. That's that's really exciting to exactly. know that we can make a difference here because it's very important yeah. to be able to look through our community and go, hey, how are we going to fill the pipeline with the next representatives sure. that are really uh, ready to step into this space? Correct. Uh, that's not just anyone. There are certain mm -hmm. people that are going to really do a great job. Uh, and hopefully we're not going to be looking at the career uh, career politicians. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we're looking at people that say, this is something I know I can solve right now. I know that I can bring an answer to this issue sure. on the table. I can work through this and get it done. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, now we can start looking at we the people beginning to matter right. again in a much greater way. Yeah, it's strength in numbers, but do it for the right cause. And it's, it's a greater good quite frankly. And, but the, you know, the common sense solutions come from the bottom mark the way up because they're so inundated with information and persuasions that maybe they're not getting and connecting the dots as they should. Well, a lot of people don't understand what the difference between a councilman and a commissioner is. That's correct. They don't know. Okay, so who's what in charge of what? the level of authority. Mm -hmm. Right. Who's in charge of what? Who's in charge of this yeah. community? Who's in, where does the money go? Exactly. Chasing that down, that's not a small job. That's correct. That takes a, quite a bit of time, and very mm -hmm. few people ha, are, are able to do that. So I think it's a, a really great way to start chipping away with that information by sh letting us know, hey, this is what's on the agenda. This right. is what everyone's going to talk about. What do you think? Oh, my goodness, just to be asked that question. Sure. Yay. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to share you with everyone. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I look Jerry. forward to engaging with people because that's what it's about is getting our country back because the legacy we're leaving and I'm a by design guy. Okay. And I know that you're either going to leave a legacy by default or by design. And one of the most powerful things I did through a leadership class was give my own eulogy to that class. Oh. <laughs> Very sober. I think we went through the same leadership yeah. class. Ouch, and so when yeah. you realize that you're going to leave yeah. a legacy, why don't it be by design more than by default? It really gets you to start thinking about what really changed so much for me is those grandbabies. And you start realizing, what are we leaving them? Ronald Reagan said it himself, that we don't inherit our freedoms in the bloodstream. Okay, we've got to protect them and yes, consider them highly valuable and then pass them on to the next generation with the same intensity, the same fervor, the same desire to protect them and pass them on forward. Otherwise, we'll be sitting in our rocking chairs talking about Way back when, when we were yeah, free. what happened? So tell us about. Uh, we've got just a minute left. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your legacy. Tell us about your kids. Oh wow! I almost bring a tear to mine. Well, all three sons are Air Force officers. Wow. Two went to the academy. I uh, can't tell you exactly what they do. Some of them are critical missions, but they they're making a difference. And what's so powerful is they're godly men, and they make a difference and they make a positive impact. They're great leaders because I've I've tried to encourage them with some of the lessons I've learned from some of my mentors, mentors like Lance Secretan and John Maxwell, you know, who teach you to inspire, not motivate. And the biggest difference I think you know is inspiration is that fire that burns within and mm -hmm. can't die. So um, they're very capable in what they're doing, and uh, I'm seeing it. So that three foot circle that I had, that ripple effects extending even broader. And then of course my daughters chasing their dreams. And the key is they're happy, they're productive, and uh, and they're making a difference any way they can. So they're responsible Americans, uh, just like we would want them to be. Well, that's exciting. You know, my daughter, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about our kids for just a minute, mm -hmm. but my oldest daughter is United States Marine Corps as well. Powerful. So she made gunnery sergeant uh, summer before last, and we couldn't be more proud mm -hmm. of, of having that aspect of our family. So we are leaving that legacy. They're leaving that legacy. Right. And if we do this thing right, we'll set them up for the future for yeah, their totally. kids. Jerry, thank you so much thank today. You so much. All of this information is going to be available on our website, on this video and the podcast. Download the Offbeat Business app and you'll have access to all of the OBBM network programming. 
You've been listening to the Offbeat Business Show. Find our lineup, podcast, magazine, event calendar, and sponsor information, even our membership directory, all available on the Offbeat Business app or at offbeatbusiness.com. Download the Offbeat Business app today. Take this for me, buddy.